Hey guys, Josh here. Have you ever tried this log in BJJ? For me, I like to use a portable grip file that is very efficient. In this video, I break down the basic structure of the wrist lock from scratch. Also, I show you how to submit from standing and close guard. Okay, today I'm going to show you the basic structure of the wrist lock. Okay, then before we start, I just want you to understand IBJF rules. So in rules, white belts are not allowed to do this. This is legal action. It is okay for above blue, purple, brown, and black belt division. So I just want you to keep in mind. Okay, let's get started. There are two ways to apply pressure on the list. Okay, the first, I just want you to see the, the range of the list movement, okay? So this way is like a bend or extend. Today, I'm going to explain the way to do like hyper extend his list like this. It's like a curling his finger side like this. This one, okay? So in order for me to do this movement, first I need to apply pressure to the proper direction like this, okay? Then I have potential to submit his list. But this is not time now. Whenever he feels the pressure, he wants to relieve it, right? If I only apply pressure on his list like this, so the rest of the person's arm is available to relieve it. He may move his elbow to the side to side. Look, he can relieve the pressure. Or he may use, use his shoulder to change the angle. So in order for me to finish, I have to stabilize his elbow and shoulder. So just simply, if I stabilize his elbow joint here, okay, he can no longer move his forearm and rest. So from this position, I just wanna push his finger towards this direction, right? This is the movement of the hyper extension on his wrist. As I apply the pressure on his finger, he's not be able to release it, right? Gradually, he was the pressure. Then once I pass at some point, like a normal range, I can apply the pressure. So this is a wrist lock, okay? Then I want you to see the other direction of his list he can move, like so, back and forth, side to side, even twist, okay? Then on this side, it's more like a pressure on his pinky side. Then there's a pressure on his list. But on the other hand, if I apply pressure on his thumb or in this finger side, look, his list rotates to the side where I cannot stop it. As you can see, look. Even though I even though I stabilize his elbow joint like this, right? If I apply pressure on his thumb side, look, he can relieve it, he can still rotate his wrist, okay? But like I showed you, right? If I apply pressure on his pinky side, look, can you turn your wrist? Right? Look, his wrist is completely locked. He cannot rotate his arm like he did. Then I can finish it. Okay? So this is the basic structure. There's also one thing you have to understand in IBJJ rules, you are not allowed to like a yank or grab a finger like this or this. It's okay if that is more than three, like this, right? So you have to be careful. Even the session when you get choked from the back, right? You are not allowed to rip off the fingers in order for you to escape. If you grab like more than three, that is okay. So I just want you to keep in mind. Okay, now I'll show the way to do wrist lock properly. I'm gonna show you two ways to do. The first one is from standing. Usually when we start from feet, we have to start with the grip fight, right? I wanna make good grips, he wants to do the same thing, okay? The one of the common grips is on my collar, right? He wants to grab my collar like this, like a judo style, right? Then he can do push and pull, like back and forth like this, right? Of course for me, if it's possible, I wanna cut his grip when, as soon as possible. Then I can reset the position. Okay? But sometimes I cannot expect that. Since he's got a really strong grip like this, he may even slightly close his elbow like this. So once it happens, it's pretty hard to do that. If I stick to do this movement, I even give him a chance to make another grip, right? He may grab a sleeve like this, or he may be grab other side of my car like this. So once it happens, I'm pretty bad position, I'm going to get attacked. So in this situation, instead of cutting a grip, I want to shift to a wrist lock, okay? So the movement is the same as I, the one I showed you, like hyper extend, okay? As you can see, he already stabilized his hand with a grip like this. So if I can control the rest of the power's arm, let's say on his wrist and elbow, I will be able to apply the pressure. So here in this position, I'm going to cut behind his elbow joint with both of my hands like this, look. Uh, it seems like it stabilizes his elbow joint like this. So once I'm done, I'm going to apply the pressure 
like it's like a hyper extends this. Okay, so from this position, okay, I slightly drive my right shoulder like towards his pole arm. Okay, I just show you once. So here, look, I apply pressure. Okay, okay let's break down movement. So here, as he grabs my collar, he make this type of shape on his wrist. Okay, hand. Then I already stabilize his elbow joint. Okay, then when the time I apply pressure, what I did was going this way, right? So in order for me to do I drive my shoulder forward. As I do so, I use my chest against his fist. Then that's gonna be a hyper extension to finish it, okay? Let's take a closer look, okay? So here, okay, I grab his elbow joint. Now I want you to understand the difference in each other, okay? If I just drive my way forward, I won't be able to apply the pressure. Let's say if I just lean forward like this without making an angle, right? He doesn't feel any pressure at all. Just because I'm just a prayer pressure on his fist or knuckle, right? In order for me to finish, I have to bend on this side. So what I like to do is this. I just open my shoulder like this. I slowly turn his wrist. Then from this position, as if I drive him away to the diagonal side of his body, and then I can apply pressure. So you make sure you keep on controlling the elbow like this, otherwise he can change the point to release the pressure. Let's say if I just lean forward, look, he's going to change it. So that's why I hold it. Look, if I can bend his elbow, that's gonna be way better for me to finish it. Or he may stick to the grip, he may close his elbow to keep it tight. So this is gonna be the best case scenario, okay? I slightly push his elbow, that comes in from my chest, and then from this position, I slightly turn my shoulder, then I drive my way on this part or on his finger, right? Then I finish it like this. Then this is gonna be a very good choice for the grip fight, right? Grip fight is not only about cutting grip. Even the wrist lock is gonna be a pressure, right? I may not be able to finish the wrist lock due to he escapes, but at least I'll be able to win the battle. Let's say it's here. He gloves my car so tight, I cannot cut in there. I just attempt the wrist lock. If I can finish, that's great. In order for me to release the pressure, he may release the grip, right? At least I win the battle. So that's why it's good to use wrist lock as a grip fight option. All right, I'll show you one more wrist lock. That is from the close guard, okay? It's gonna be the same structure that I show on her feet, okay? So this is really common. Like he already made a really good frame, like with grips, to make them posture like this, right? In order for me to play close guard, I have to break his posture down, like making him cringe. But it's a bit difficult to do that. I wanna cut his grip first. I simply make the two on one on his left arm, okay? Just make slip grip like this. And then I just cut it, like extend my arms, like this. Then from now, there's been a lot of choice, like arm drag, like over hook. So today, wrist lock, okay? So from this position, I wanna make the shape. The first, I grab his palm like this, like palm to palm. I use my right palm against his left palm like this. Like slightly, like open his palm like this, okay? After I go like this, I switch my left hand. Uh, I'm going to grab my own wrist like this, right? This is the same, same shape as the Kimura, look. My arm go over like this, okay? Once I've done it, look, I made a shape for the wrist lock, okay? So what I'm going to do is hyper extends this, okay? So from this position, I slide grab his hand like this, and then I start closing my elbows. Look, I'm stabilizing his left arm. I automatically stabilize his elbow as well. So from this position, what I'm going to do is shrink my body, okay? So I close my elbows, push his arm towards my hips, and then I slightly come up. Then I apply the pressure. Okay, I share again. I cut a grip like this, okay? Now I want to make sure that I use my right hand to grab his palm like this, not the other way. So this is the same shape as Kimura, okay? This, and then other one goes over his palm, not under, this. What he wants to do is extend his arm or rotate his wrist to escape it, right? Before he does, I want to bend his arm. It's the same shape as Americana or Kimura. This. But this is not time. I close my elbows to reinforce a position like this. Then I even use my hips to stabilize the elbow like this. 
So this is the coordination I showed at the beginning of the video. Like his wrist and elbows are stabilized. Then I'm going to hyperextend him. Then I want you to remember the detail I showed, right? When I time your prior pressure on his wrist, not on his thumb side. It needs to be on pinky side. If I apply pressure on his thumb side, he can still, look, escape, like moving his elbow, right? But if I apply pressure to the proper side, that is on his pinky side, he can no longer move it. Even though he moves his elbow on this side, look, he cannot escape. That even helps me to finish it, okay? So here, I close my elbow, then I gradually push. I even use my upper body, and then I apply pressure. Hey guys, my name is Daniel. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please push the like button and leave us a comment down below. If you want to learn more techniques, simply hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when we upload a new video. This way we can bring you new and improved content. Thank you and see you next time.